give life You are love You bring light To the darkness You give hope You restore Every heart That is broken Great your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only great are you Lord you give life So we pour out a praise, we pour out a praise, it's 
Side, friends and family. We're so glad you joined us today. Today we uh, are going to continue our series in dealing with uh, the culture and life issues that we face today. We want to talk about how to stay on point in the storm. This week we know that the governor has instituted uh, face masks everywhere, which is, you know, uh, certainly going to be awkward at, at, at the least and uh, uh, somewhat causing many of us to just obey uh, because uh, he's in authority uh, and, uh, and uh, trying to do, what, uh, do what's best. So I want to talk about today uh, what we're facing and is what we are facing unprecedented in the history of man. Number two, I want to ask ourselves how we as people of God deal with uncertainty, confusion, and hatred we see going on in our culture. How do we deal with that? 
as believers. So I'm going to start in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're going to read it out loud. We're going to read it out loud together. Uh, Paul writes to Timothy, he says, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than love God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Stay away from people like that. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable, vulnerable women who are burdened with guilt, the guilt of sin, and controlled by various desires. Such women are forever following new teachings, for they are never able to understand the truth. These teachers oppose the truth, just as Janus and Jambres oppose Moses. They have depraved minds and a counterfeit faith. But they won't get away with it for, for long. Someday everyone will recognize what fools they are, just as with the two with Moses. But you, Timothy, certainly not what, know what I teach and how I live and what my purpose in life is. You know my faith, my patience, my love, and my endurance. You know how much persecution and suffering I have endured. You know all about how I was persecuted in Antioch and Ichneum and Lystra, but the Lord rescued me from all of it. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil people and imposters will flourish. They will deceive others and will this themselves be deceived. But for you know, but for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught by the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Jesus Christ. All Scripture is inspired by God and is, is, is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what's right. God uses that to uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. You know, I'm reminded, and we talked about a little bit last week, that the word of God actually will accomplish what it was sent to do. The word of God is enough. It teaches us. It corrects us. It shows us uh, what's wrong, and it teaches us to do what is right. When I, when I look at Scripture and I look at the disciples, one I really want to focus on today, uh, real quickly, with you, is Peter. You know, in Acts chapter 2, Peter did what Jesus had requested, and he went to an upper room, and he waited for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he preached an incredible message, probably the best message that's ever been preached. And uh, in, in Acts chapter 2, and in verse 40, it says this. And with many other words, Peter testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Be saved from this perverse generation. I just want to point out that we may be facing things that we've never faced, but the, but the root, the the nature and the character of humankind, the, the attributes of, of human beings that have been exposed and have, and have succumbed to sin are the same. And so, so the question is, are we facing unprecedented times in history of man? And I want to answer that by saying maybe with COVID-19, maybe with a virus, but not with the character of man not with the situation of culture. And so, so 
Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and everything changed. He preaches this incredible message. And, and we understand that Peter was opinionated. He had, he had incredible opinions. He, was, he had biases. He, he had things that he thought. And, and I just want to say that even though he was filled with the Holy Spirit, his biases needed some work. He had biases. And, and oftentimes what we do is we, we build our lives on our biases. You know, it's all right to have biases on what kind of food you like, what kind of movies. You know, some people like Lifetime Channel. Some people like HGTV. Some people like ESPN. We can have a bias toward television. We can have a bias for restaurants we like to go to or styles of food. I'm a, just a tad bias to Italian food. And we can have those biases, but when we get in trouble is when we build our life and our way of thinking and our responses based on our biases. And, and, and what Peter did and, and what made him special and what made him stand out and what made him victorious and successful during the midst of a situation where he lived in a perverse generation was that he remained teachable. And so the first thing we gotta do is be filled with the Holy Spirit. The second thing we need to make sure that we're doing is that we're staying teachable as we go. What you'll see in Acts chapter 10 is Peter has this encounter with God and God comes to Peter in a dream and Peter, e even with um, his even racial bias, uh, God gives Peter a dream that lets him know that he is to go somewhere that he never thought it or saw himself go. He, he began to bridge a gap, to begin to be a messenger of God in a place that he had never previously seen himself be a bridge. He, 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 he goes to Cornelius' house and it says in Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, then Peter opened his mouth and he said, uh, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. And so, and so before that, before that, Peter had a bias that he was living with a, with a, with a privileged group of people, but he has discovered through his encounter with God that God shows no partiality. And he says this in 35, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by God. There are two things that, that are part of the nature and the character of people who are following God, and that is they fear the Lord and they do righteous works. They do righteous works. And so we are to remain teachable. The good news is Peter didn't start that way. And in the process, as he went, God showed him and he, had, he perceived that God was not partial. And so, and so we're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to remain teachable as we go. And we're not going to let the things of this world, we're not going to let the culture, we're not going to let the teachers or, or, the, or the people that are contrary to the word of God bring enough confusion to our situation where it overcomes us. And so we're going to remain people who are steadfast in the ways and the word of God. Paul said it in his letter to Timothy, you know what I've taught you. From, from the time you were a kid, you've been taught the right thing. You've been taught the scriptures. You've been taught the word of God. Stand on that. That's what you stand on. We have to be determined as believers that we're not going to let confusion overcome us. We can know that we can have biases, but we're not going to let our biases be what we build our life on. We're going to build our lives on the word of God. And we recognize the fact that truth is aligned with the word of God. Our biases are not truth. Those things that, that mold our biases are not truth. The word of God is where truth comes from. And so our allegiance, what we're going to pledge our allegiance to is not a political system. It's not a, it's not a people group. It's not a, it's not a, uh, it's, it's not what's cool. What we're going to pledge our allegiance to is going to be the word of God 
and not the things that mold our biases. And so I want to ask you a few questions today. In this passage of scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3, what do you see about today's culture that looks like the culture that Paul was describing to Timothy? Do you see a resemblance? Do you see a resemblance of, of what we're seeing manifest in our culture today being what Paul talked about that would manifest in, in times? That there would be terrible, perilous times ahead. Do you feel like today we're seeing some of that? So, so when we see that, Paul's letter to Timothy gives him this instruction, give these instruction on how to maintain that stability with a culture that's trying to pervert your way of thinking. How does that apply to you? What are you learning from the word of God on how to respond to the situation that you find yourself in? Do you find yourself leaning on the word of God more or do you find yourself leaning on your biases more? Which one do you think is the most important thing for you to lean on the word of God or your current biases. How well are you doing with that? How are you dealing with discouragement? How are you doing with Satan's task tactics to rob you of hope? You know, one of the things that I just want to talk about today, and we've kind of talked about it in the video that we put out earlier in the week, Satan's biggest, uh, 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 his, 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 his motivation, his, his method of operation, his mode of operation, is to bring division, is to isolate you, is to put you in a place where you're depending just on your own emotions, your own thoughts, versus bringing you together with a body of believers that is going to help you uh, maintain stability. Jesus puts a tremendous emphasis on the, on the work of the church. Now, the church is not a building. The church is not an organization. The church is relationship with other believers. How well are you doing that? Do you see Satan's tactic, tactics bringing discouragement to you, bringing isolation to you, robbing you of hope that this thing's ever going to end or, or things are going to get back to normal? We have no idea what the new normal is going to look like, but this we know. We can stand firm on. We need each other. And the mandate in Scripture is to not... To, to continue to assemble together, to, to, uh, to stay in community. And we've got to fight for that. And we've got to not lose hope. And we not get discouraged. And we can't fall prey to, to Satan's tactics to, to separate you out and to get you doing things that you wouldn't normally do if you were, if you were connected to a body of believers. How well are you doing that? How well are you handling discouragement? How well uh, are you handling a hopelessness that's being sold uh, throughout the media? How is the word of God helping you gain confidence that God's in charge of this thing? How, 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 how well is the word of God helping you gain confidence in God's plan to bring about good from what we're seeing and what we're having to endure? You know, what I really want you to do and what we, what we desire as a church is, is to disciple you in a way where you can keep growing. We just don't want to entertain you. We just don't want to be someone who comes to you and you, you go through the motions of doing something and not actually begin to move forward in what God would have you do in your ministry, in your families, raising your children, and being able to carry out the task that he created you for. And so we hope that you answer these questions, that you discuss them in your family situation, uh, that, you, that you think about them as Paul wrote them for us to think about. And, uh, and then we're going to come through this thing. We're going to realize the whole time that just like in the days of, 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 of the, uh, Israel wandering in the wilderness, that all along, even in that wilderness situation, God had a plan, and his plan was what was promised the whole time, and that's victory and prosperity. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you that your word is true. I thank you that we can count on it. I thank you, God, that you, that you offer a, a, a time and a place that you're going to one-on-one meet with each one of us. I thank you, God, that, 
that you have promised that your spirit is for all flesh, that our sons and daughters will operate in the supernatural, and that we'll be able to have relationship with you just like the prophets, just like those of old, just like just like Moses, God, that we can be in one with the Holy Spirit, that we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, the, the third person of the Trinity, that the Holy Spirit makes its home with us. I thank you, God, for those that aren't filled with the Holy Spirit yet, and I pray wherever you might be right now that you would be filled with the Holy Spirit, that you would begin to pray that God would fill you with the Holy Spirit and that you would begin to expect to operate in the supernatural, that you would expect the word of God to come alive to you, and that you would expect the power to be obedient to what it says. Father, I thank you, God, that, that each one of us has a teachable spirit, and God, that we are not going to allow confusion or, or a perverse generation to change what we think about you or cause us to get depressed or cause us to lose hope that you actually are going to bring good to something that looks so, so, so confusing and so hopeless. Father, I thank you that in the midst of a per perverse generation that you have a church that you've called to respond in a certain way, and we're going to do that by responding to your word. I thank you, God, that your word is true, and it will do what it was sent to do. Make a commitment today. Change your life. Pursue Jesus. Don't just sit back and listen to messages. Dig into the word. Make sure you get what is speaking to you and then do it. God bless you. Have a great day. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We would love to be praying for you guys. If you have needs in your life or needs of family or friends, please let us know so we can be joining with you in prayer. You can simply shoot us an email at info at eastsidechurch.tv. And we as a staff would love to pray over those. We'll also get them to our prayer team so they can be a part of believing and standing with you as well. If you'd like to give this morning, we have three ways for you to do that. It's pretty simple. You can do it through our website. You can do it through good old snail mail or you can do it by texting to give those should be on the screen in front of you and again thank you so much for joining us today we love you guys we're praying for you and we hope you have a great week